Mark Smith is the President and CEO of Largo Resources. Mark, welcome to the Investor Intel Studio via Skype. Great to be here, Fred. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, you've got uh, a, a great story in Vanadium. Uh, just for the benefit of those of us that don't deal with Vanadium on a regular basis, could you explain its uses, please? Sure. Vanadium is actually quite widely used in the economy and has just literally hundreds and hundreds of uses. But I think to just kind of quantify it easily so that people can, can feel like they understand this market better, just think of vanadium as something that strengthens steel. And over half of the vanadium that's produced in the world today is actually used in the form of rebar, which provides seismic protection and you know, strength and, and safety for us as uh, human beings. And that's one of its, obviously one of its largest uses. The second largest use would probably be in uh, steel tools. And again, it's all about making that steel tool hard and stiff and strong so that when you and I are chiseling something or, or grinding something, you know, we've got a very hard material to work with, which uh, makes our job a lot easier. We've been accustomed uh, at Investor Intel of hearing stories about uh, strategic metals and industrial metals. Um, being controlled in one market and being consumed in another market. Uh, what are the supply and demand uh, geographic logistics for, for vanadium? Vanadium is a little different than some metals in that there's basically four countries that produce the material. So it's a little better than some, a little, little worse than others. But the four countries that, that produce vanadium today would be China. Uh, China produces about 50 to 55 percent of the world's production. Uh, the second country uh, in terms of, of large production used to be South Africa, but through some bankruptcies as a result of, of the, the resource industry and, and tough times uh, for vanadium pricing uh, last year, uh, we've now uh, probably made Russia the number two producer in the world, and it's uh, probably 17 to 20 percent or so. Uh, South Africa and Brazil are, are roughly tied in terms of their capability to produce, and we're probably somewhere in the 10 to 12 percent each in those categories. So uh, the problem with that, Fred, is of course the numbers don't add up to 100 percent, and that's largely because China is actually higher than 55 percent right now as a result of the South African material coming off the market. Mm -hmm. So China may be upwards of, of close to 65 percent at this point in time. Now, your deposit, and you're in production, uh, you've been in production uh, commercially since uh, the last quarter of calendar quarter of last year. Um, yeah. You're unique, though. You've you've got the largest resource and the highest quality. Now this is this is an unbelievable resource, and one of the things that that I like to do as both an investor and an executive is to start out with you know having a world class resource before I engage in any of anything with any company. And Largo clearly meets that standard. I mean, this 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 resource uh, at our Americas mentioned mine in Brazil is is massive, uh, 45 kilometer long strike length, um, 150 meters wide. We only drill down to about 350 meters, and we've got a very continuous homogeneous ore body uh, in this area. So this is a massive, massive ore body. It's it's the clearly the highest ore grade in the world. And as a result of that high ore grade, we're actually seeing two very important things that benefit Largo and its investors to a great extent. One is that the unit cost of production at our Brazilian mine is, we think, the lowest in the world. There will be people that want to argue that point, but we think that we've got some of the lowest cost production in the world. The second point, though, which is, is really becoming quite fascinating to us as a company, is the quality of the material that we're producing is really outstanding and arguably is probably the highest quality vanadium being produced in the world today. That has a whole bunch of, of really interesting aspects to it because when you get into the high quality material and the high end uses that that high quality deserves, you're now talking about a bigger margin. So if we get higher margins for our material and we continue to have low unit production costs, we have a, a, a massive world-class deposit. I really like that combination of, of things coming together uh, as an investor and an executive of Largo. Well, a couple of points. One, just quickly, 
investors like to see uh, the principals have skin in the game, and you have skin in the game. I do. I'm probably sixth or seventh largest shareholder in Largo, and uh, I'm, I'm in it for a reason, and, and that's because it is a really, really fantastic deposit, fantastic people, and we're now operating the way we want to operate. Well, if I read your reports correctly, you brought the cost down from the first quarter of production to the second quarter of production by 19%. That's correct, Fred, but the, the thing I like to point out to people is that that 19% reduction on its own is quite impressive. Keep in mind that that's being done in a country where the inflation rate is over 10%. All of a sudden, that 19% reduction becomes even more meaningful. So that's, that's the caliber of people we have in this company. We're really proud of, of our operations. Well, Brazil has been in the news not only because of the Olympics. Um, the mining jurisdiction, for those that don't know, uh, it's a pretty strong jurisdiction for mining. Very strong jurisdiction. It's a, it's, it's a, a, the state of Bahia is where we're located, and there are several mines that have historically been in the area. So the regulatory and the permitting systems are all very well defined. They're very reasonable, they're very predictable, very reliable, and we have had really zero issues in terms of any permitting down in, in Brazil. We find it to be a, a very technically competent organization that reviews our applications and issues decisions. Not, not many of us have access to um, pricing on vanadium in the spot market. Uh, could you just characterize that in the last couple of years, please? Yeah, the, well, actually, I'm going to go way back further than that, Fred. But okay. uh, if you take a look at the last 30 years of pricing for vanadium, it's roughly at about $5 a pound on a V205 basis, a vanadium pentoxide basis. Mm -hmm. In the last 10 years, that number has been about $6.47 a pound. So we kind of keep those two things in mind. Last year, in 2015, pricing in, in most of the resource sector, of course, was impacted negatively, and vanadium was certainly one of those. Uh, vanadium actually hit a 12-year historic low of pricing of $2.25 a pound in December of 2015. So um, I'll come back to that issue in, in a little bit as we, as we talk more about Largo, but that low pricing environment clearly had impacts on the supply side of supply and demand. Now we're, we're looking at, at prices more in the 350 to 375 a pound range, but because of what happened in the supply side of the market due to those low prices, the, uh, the, the supply and demand equation has changed quite dramatically. Demand has stayed right about where it has always been, so it's actually uh, very dependable, very reliable. What we're seeing, though, is on the supply side, because of bankruptcies, which were caused by low pricing, we're seeing about 15 to 20,000 tons less production in a market that needs you know, 90 to 95,000 tons a year. So the, the story in the vanadium industry is truly the supply side, and that's why we're even smiling bigger uh, at Largo right now because we've, we've got the best position, we think, of all the producers in the world uh, in terms of ore grade, ore deposit, uh, ability to produce at low cost, and ability to produce a high quality product. Mark, thanks very much. Largo Resources has been doing extremely well on the TSX uh, this year so far, and we look forward to hearing more news from you and the company. Well, thank you, Fred, and just a quick uh, a quick spiel for the TSX. It was fantastic to be uh, graduated up to the TSX on July 4th of this year, and we really think that that adds additional credibility to the company and its future. And we're really proud and happy to be a member of the TSX. So thank you for the opportunity today, and I look forward to speaking again soon.